two minutes past 11 on the night of Tuesday, the 28th of May. Hello. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm being very, very precise. I just popped in and this is totally impromptu. I have to admit, listen, I, I put my hands up. I've been just over a week on the dry and I promised I wasn't going to do anything <laughs> until I, I head off to Madrid. Now, and I still, I'm still cutting back. But my wife was definitely the Eve to my Adam tonight. So we were watching a documentary on the Bay City Rollers, more anon. And we're having a nice bit of dinner. And she says to me, it's a shame to have this without some wine. And I'd been so bloody good. So there was a bit of a bottle, uh, only a bit in the bottom. I said, well, I'll have the bit in the bottom. I'll open another one for you because I'm being ultra cool and good. But I did have one more glass afterwards. That was me, though. So it was a glass and a half. And sorry if I'm a, coming across a bit groggy. I had a kind of a funny old day because I I went to see a cardiologist today of my own volition. I just went to see him because he's a really go-to guy. And um, he was really no nonsense. And I'd, I'd been sore in my chest anyway, but I often get that. A lot of it has to do with being your sternum being opened, you know. Even years later, you get the pain. So it's actually eased off with the alcohol, <laughs> funny enough. But it really brought me back to mortality's door. I mean, he looked at me a couple of times and said, you you were so young to have that operation. You were so young and quadruple, you know, uh, bypass. And uh, when I had it, I was 55. And it just, it just... He meant, he was doing his job, but, he, you know, I, I know, I know I was young to have it, you know. <laughs> I don't need to be reminded. A no-nonsense guy, though, and as far as he's concerned, uh, the next year for me is just about losing some weight. And um, there's a new miracle, supposedly, injection on the market. I am very suspicious of anything that's new and not really tested, as you all know. Um, and um, so just what will, uh, just very quickly, well, uh, Nigel, will you stop sending me great stories that you won't allow me read? Is that okay? I do, I do enjoy your stories. And by the way, I do see them some mornings at 2 a.m. coming in. And uh, don't be offended, but I'm often awake at that time, lying in bed, but I'm just too tired to reply. Stop sending me great material I can't use. I will just say in relation to, sorry, this is between me and Nigel. Would you believe a couple of years back, maybe two years ago, Myself and my wife were walking on the Strand here at Dublin Bay and we saw a chimney on fire, or what we thought was on fire. It was sparks coming out of it, like. And we knocked on the door as well. Sorry, that was a break for ads between me and Nigel. Anyway, nothing had happened. A man seemed to be used to his chimney going up like that. So anyway, we're going to talk about Bay City Rollers and me being a, a, a bit of a womble. I think I might leave it at that. For tonight, do I have anything else to relate to you? No, probably not. That'll be it. Stay, stay put. I have to do that. It's just like a little separator between the beginning and what's to come. So, uh, much as I love Duran Duran, a lot of you that know me know I love Duran Duran. Before I go anywhere, before I go anywhere, hello. To the lovely Susan, who's broken cover. I thought I might have lost you for a while, Susan, because I'm not everybody's cup of tea. And by the way, I apologise to my UK listeners as well, um, because I, you know, it wasn't a bank holiday here yesterday. I know it was important to you guys, and a lot of you got washed out in it. Hello to Jerry as well. Jerry has, has given me his location. I didn't want to ask. Jerry's in Devon. Ooh, are. Ooh, are. So we got an A up and a new R on board. Hello to Tara as well. I hope you're there. I, I need to talk to you. I haven't talked to you in a while. Tara's my sister. And um, who else? Of course, Mick as well. Um, and Joan in Wales. I don't think Joan's with us anymore. Well, I mean, I hope she's with us, but she's not, she's not on the channel anymore. Please, if you do look at these at all, at all, at all, and you have, you know, you haven't liked and subscribed. Like and subscribe, or at least subscribe, even if you don't like. Is that allowed? 1974, 1975, 
Bay City Roller Mania. They were an incredible pop group, but they had a lineage going way back to the mid-1960s, run by a Svengali-type notorious abuser of young boys called uh, Tom Payton, who was actually, as a businessman, he was a, a pretty farmer. He was a potato farmer. Um, but he, he he really got to, into the Bay City Roller thing. And there were a few incarnations of Bay City Rollers before they became Leslie, Alan, Derek, Woody and Eric. Whoa, the wine hasn't affected me too much. They were the quintessential lineup, as you know. Um, the band was kind of originally formed, by the way, by Alan, the late Alan Longmuir and the brother Derek, who I think became a bit disgraced, although he, he has a he has a side to his story as well, I believe. Um, he was done for possessing... Oh, I don't want to go there. It's too late for me, but, um, you know, um, photographs of a certain nature. But he said, if I recall rightly, that somebody had left him behind... I don't know. Anyway, so these, these guys were, were incredible. Just to look at, they were scrawny kids though and they were taken for a ride. Huge time. And I mean huge time. Let me give you an example. Those again of you who know me know I am fascinated by Duran Duran. Why is that? Because I loved the talent. I loved the kind of... Um, I love the lyrics Le Bon wrote originally, which were kind of out there. They were abstract. Um, I love the image. I love the bravery in wearing makeup um, and the artistry and the fashion and video, the pioneers of video. That's why I love Duran Duran. And I have seen them quite a few times they've been in Ireland. Um, the last time I got thumped, at one for dancing too much. A guy thumped me. I don't think you'd stand for that, Nigel, would you? Now, he thumped me in the back. I thought it was actually somebody fainting behind me. I felt a few kind of taps. Yeah, he was an owl fella. And, uh, you know, he took up exception to the fact that everybody got on their feet, even, even though it was a seated area. We all got to our feet because Duran Duran were on. Their entree was Night Boat, if you might remember that song. Some of you new, romant new old romantics. And I got up and I was excited. This fucker thump, thumped me. But anyway, he tried to apologise later and I told him where to go. Um, best ever Duran gig I was at was actually just a year before that in St. Anne's Park. But, oh, stop it, Mark. Stop, you're losing people. Anyway, Duran, with all their success in the States and everything, they sold about 80 million albums. At least they're still around. But they sold 80 million, sorry, 80 million records. Guess how much Bay City Rollers. Why, why do people always do that? Guess. You know when you just want to tell me? You, no, no, guess. Guess. And then you guess. And it's a wrong guess. And they go, no, guess again. What the fuck is that? That often happens, doesn't it? Anyway, they sold Duran Duran, say around 80 million, 60 to 80 million. Bay City Rollers, 120 million. And that is not including the merchandise. And each of those boys came out with the grand total after years of battling in court, about 70 grand each. Leslie was the most damaged, the late Leslie McKeown, the lead singer, um, very much the most prominent member of the band. Can I tell you my Leslie McKeown story? He died in 2021, and at some time in 2021 or maybe 2020, they did a small gig here, a kind of a small Bay City Rollers gig. I'm not sure who of the original band was in it, but Leslie definitely was. Um, he was dead within a few months of that concert. He died of um, kind of heart disease related um, heart disease. And... Uh, but it had probably been exasperated by years and years of uh, drug abuse. However, at one point, in all the jumping around, in the small little area that is Leopardstown in Dublin, how the great and mighty have fallen, I was jumping up and down, all nearly 16 stone of me, and I caught Leslie McKeown's eye. And he caught my eye. 
it's hard to explain, we had a moment. And I think he was very amused at the state of me jumping up and down. And we just had that, just for the fleeting second. And he gave me a smile. I told my wife and she'd slag me. But he said, he, he gave me a lovely fruity smile. I can't explain it. But I caught Leslie McKeown's eyes um, a few months before he passed. And I treasure that little moment. It was just a connection with a pop idol. I mean, a guy I'd kind of, as, as a child, he would be a few years older than me, not much. But I kind of grew up watching the Bay City Rollers, you know, the half mast trousers and the tartan. Yeah, I just had a moment. I had a moment. And I treasure it. Now, I'll never, I want to see, I want to have a moment with Simon Le Bon and John Taylor of Duran Duran, my greatest wish. They'll probably just write me off as some fat old 60-something-year-old. Yeah, I'm younger than they are probably at this stage. Mm. So, am I making any sense or am I losing you a bit because I've had the wine and a half? It's only the wine and a half. I'm fine. In fact, I wasn't going to come on here at all, but I, I decided I wanted to connect, especially once Nigel made contact with a story he won't allow me to share. Hey, it's, send me some stories I can share because they're great. Hello as, hello as well to Ray. I've coined a phrase, uh, Cardigan Radio or Cardigan Club. Ray is the master of that. Um, check out Ray's Rants on YouTube. You'll see it, R-A-Y-S, R-A-N-T-S. Ray won't mind me saying he's 73 years of age. We've liked each other over the last year or two. We've we've become friends. And he, he emailed me today. And I've emailed him back. And I just love what he does. Why do I like Ray's Rants? Will I put a link down? I'll put a link down below, okay? I love it because it refers back to a time when people had time for each other and for pursuits and things. That is why I like Ray's rants. He slows it all down into that cardigan club, as I call it. This too is a bit of a cardigan club. I coined a phrase. Sorry, Ray, I'm going to hang on to that one. You can you can use it, though. I license it out to you. Will I license it out? What's the word? A franchise it out to you, will I? Uh, but Ray is great. I mean, he goes back to pirate days in the UK. I go back to radio pirate days in Ireland. Um, now, the Wombles. You might remember the Wombles of Wimbledon, those of you of a certain age. Of course, it was a band made famous by Mike Batt, who was a great lyricist, uh, as well as the lead singer of the Wombles. They were hidden up in Wombles clothes. There was Uncle Bulgaria, wasn't there? Orinoco, I can't really remember the rest, but here it here it goes. Uh, underground, overground, wombling free, the wombles of Wimbledon, come and are we making good? Stop laughing, Nigel. Making good use of the things that we find, the things that the watch this bit. Everyday folk leave behind, Uncle. Bulgaria. Okay, why am I talking about the Wombles? I'll tell you why. Okay, here's an example. This chair behind me. Um, myself and my wife out for a lunchtime walk. This thing. I'm not going to lift it up. But it's a perfectly good business chair. This is what happens when you live in the leafy suburbs of South Dublin. So I don't know whether they were moving or whatever. This is a fine business chair. It's lovely. Now, I had one of the fancy Miller ones, or Stafford Miller or something, uh, but I actually broke that. Um, I have another decent one I'm on, but this chair, I know you can't see it. I found that sitting out somebody's outside, beside a skip, and I wheeled it home. It's in perfect nick. Now, what you can't see as well is a few months before that, being in the uh, voiceover game, it's in it's nice to have as much sound protection as you can. And this stuff is fine, you see, around me. But the very odd time, the very odd time, there is a chance, because this is a very expensive mic, of sound seeping in from outside sources, you know, be it a drill or an ambulance going by or whatever. Just sometimes if I'm really locked in to, say, doing an audio book, I can't afford to have extraneous sounds. I'm not going to... I'm too old. 
Ah, oh, fuck it. Here, hang on. Hang on. Anyway, I'm not too old, for fuck's sake. I keep... I... So. Keep looking. So, see this beautiful partition? Ow! I've got this kind of pain in my arse recently. It's, I, you know, I do check my stool. I'm sorry if that's a bit too much information. So there's no blood in it or anything, but I do get a kind of pain up my arse. Anyway, stop laughing in the cheap seats. This beautiful partition and its fabric, that was outside a house, not far from here. Oh, it's about a year ago now. Um, again, myself and my wife out for a lunchtime walk. It was, I was getting ready to be thrown out. And it had been only cleaned recently. And I s s said to the workman, do you mind if I knock on the door and talk to the owner? The owner was too happy. Paddy, former accountant, I think. Paddy says, of course you can have it. I said, uh, yeah, I'd really be able to make use of it. Now, finally, I'm out on Saturday. And another skip. Just kind of there on the seafront. Not far from the house. Right. A book by the Georgian Society of Ireland. All these kind of stuffed shirts, but that own and look after old properties in Ireland. Um, you know, the Guinnesses and people like that who would have known, like Mick Jagger and hung out with him. These, this beautiful... There's one of these Lord Tweed types we all aspire to. What do you think of that, huh? Yeah? Do you like that, Jerry? Do you like that, Nigel? Sue? Hey, up. Look at that. Imagine us all. Imagine us all. Like meeting up sometime in an Irish country house or something. You know, let's, let's do it before I die. But again, this was out. And there was a bag. I didn't look at the DVDs. There was a bag full of DVDs as well. And a little beautiful note saying, take what you want. This thing. I'd say that cost about 30 quid in its day. It is freaking beautiful. Okay, I'm not quite Dublin 4. I'm right on the outs. Dublin 4, by the way, is very exclusive. But if you... <sighs> I'm that close to being a Dublin 4 address. There's actually a boundary about 40, 40 yards up the way from my front door. And the boundary is Dublin 4. Sorry, I didn't make the Dublin 4 exclusive clique. But I'm in South County Dublin, which is quite still eminently respectable. Who cares? We're not into a pissing competition here, are we? Bay City Rollers, we were looking at a documentary tonight. And of course, the abuse they suffered at the hands of this guy, Tom Payton and his and his cohorts. It was horrendous because you saw these kids who really probably signed contracts they could barely write and read themselves but signed contracts uh, a la George Michael who was still a very wealthy man when he passed but I mean, you know, when you're 19 years of age you kind of sign anything to get famous and to get laid. Tragic. Tragic to see these young men uh, who'd been abused or, you know, given drugs, whatever, and then, you know, waking up with a gang around him kind of thing. Oh, it was horrific. It was hor It was hosted by Nicky Campbell, who apparently suffered some abuse himself in some kind of private school. Now, you know, I'm sorry. I, Jesus, I'm so sorry. I do have empathy for people and I do have sympathy. But I hate, you know, when they play the sad music to go with the, the emotion. Uh, it's like selling. What I'm hearing is tragic. I don't need you to pathos it up by putting sad music behind it. And, you know, sometimes I look at a great motivational speech, be it a Tony Robbins or, or whatever, and they have this fucking music in behind the thing. Um, I, I bet you're still overwhelmed. Look, look at the quality of that. Look. Look. You know, and also, while I'm on that subject, a pet hate of mine... There should be a law against putting popular music to advertisements. For instance, ELO, Mr. Blue Sky. That song, to me, 
and certainly uh, I'd say are quite an element of my generation, is a sacrosanct song. You don't fuck with it, excuse my language. Don't mess with it. Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us why you had to... I remember that song, Circa 77, 78, when it came out first. And it's such a positive song. Running down the avenue. I know, Nigel, you're into this. It seems to be a Nigel-centric night, but Nigel's from Birmingham. Birmingham. Brummy. And as our vast majority VLO, I see they lost a member recently. Um, but Jeff Lynn and the boys. And who's the guy as well? I know I've talked to you before about him, Nigel. The guy who was in the move. You know, oh, yeah, Roy Wood, wasn't he? He was with them for a while, I think. But that song, now they have that against the lottery ad in Ireland. It could be you. And um, <laughs> they've ruined it. I mean, any time I listen to that song now, I have images of s portly, obese men in swimming trunks sliding down a slide into a pool, which is how they've made the advertisement here in Ireland. Everyone's having a good time in a communal pool flying down through the water chutes, isn't that what they're called? And the guys with their big fucking stomachs out and, you know, Hey, Mr. Blue Sky, please tell us. Oh, you've ruined it. You have freaking ruined it. All as I ever thought is, when that song used to hit me, it was always a great feel-good factor song. Now it is tainted. I'm out of coffee. And you're saying, I'm fed up listening to you, Mark Manning. That's okay. That's allowed. Get in touch if you can. Like and subscribe. Comments below. No problem if you don't want it tonight because this is an impromptu. If you want to get into more detail, uh, this much is true at protonmail.com. Surprise me. Make me happy. Susan, you used to use it. Yeah, this much is true at protonmail.com. Uh, anything else? I'd love to talk sometime about Tony Hancock. I think there's two great comedians. Currently, Steve Coogan, who I believe is a comic genius because of his attention to detail. But a guy who could make me laugh, even though I'm looking back through the prism of years since his program was out, the Hancock Half Hour, was the late Tony Hancock. A tragic tragic figure, a man who was hilarious um, and came to a point in Australia, he moved down to Australia where he didn't find, didn't think that he was funny anymore and took his own life. And on that happy note, actually, do you know what? I don't want to leave it on that note. Let's just cheer it up a bit. Sorry, I have to start again. Listening to that reminds me of Minder, as you know, and I have been looking at some Dennis Waterman stuff, particularly old tricks or new tricks, new tricks, which was a detective series about cardigan types, um, semi-retired detectives coming back into um, cold cases and reopening them and solving them. And I, I was looking at him recently and I just thought, oh God, age is terrible. Age is awful. Eve, I saw it today when I was up in the clinic, the Black Rock Clinic, uh, where Roger Whittaker had been treated at one point. He passed away recently. Big thing I have about Roger Whittaker. Better keep that for another day. Um, but I was looking at Dennis Waterman and blonde and, and handsome. I could be so good for you. Looking like you want me to. I remember, do you remember him back in like uh, da -na -na, da -na -na, the Sweeney? And then you see him getting older and... <sighs> Goodbye. <laughs>